Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs> Welcome to Cooking on the Farm. I'm Rachel and today we are getting our spuds ready. And by spuds, I mean those potatoes. Um, I hate it when you cook potatoes and you're constantly trying them over and over and you're like, I can't get the salt right. I have found a trick. It was an accident actually. Um, my cousin and I were in the kitchen the night before Thanksgiving and we were just, we were cooking and talking and cooking and talking. And before you knew it, I had pilled five pounds of potatoes and he goes, um, you cook those tomorrow, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, oh well. And so I just stuck my potatoes in the salted water and set it on the counter. And the next morning I put it on the stove and cooked it up and they were perfect potatoes. What I'm gonna do, literally I'm gonna peel my potatoes and then chop them. I'm gonna put them in the pot and forget them. So we're gonna add about a quarter cup of salt. And honestly, that's how I'm measuring it. That's that's how I'm rolling. You don't even have to worry about it dissolving, like you can give it a little stir, it's not a big deal. I am also using my pasta pot thingy because once your potatoes are cooked, you just pull them out like this, you drain them, you forget about them for about two minutes, then I'll show you the rest tomorrow. All right, so. I'm just gonna peel all these guys up and chop them and show you what it looks like. So I wanted to show you this. See how right here there's no green and right here there is? That is actually toxic to some people. So make sure you get that all peeled off. Um, my dad was a produce man and this old guy came in one time and he's like, can you help me find potatoes without green stuff on it? And my dad's like, sure. Cause you can sometimes see it through the peel and so he helped the guy find the potatoes. And my dad's like, why do you need potatoes without the, the, the green stuff? He goes, I'm allergic to it. It actually makes me end up in the hospital. So I'm cutting this into about one inch cubes. Hopefully they all fit in here. This is what my spuds look like. There's about, I don't know, an inch of water covering them. And I am literally just gonna put my lid on it. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay guys, so I time it, well I have an hour to do my potatoes and gravy. My bird has a half hour left to cook and a half hour to rest. So it has an hour total. My potatoes are gonna take about half hour to cook and then I'm gonna take the juices that have come out of my bird and make my gravy. So an hour, so this is like crunch time, like people are showing up, it's almost time for dinner. So these are the potatoes that I soaked all night in salt water. Um, they still look like potatoes. They're not soft or anything like that. The water has thickened a little bit because it's drawn out some of those starches. That's fine. You're gonna cook them in that same water. Do not rinse them. All right, this is gonna go on high heat and it's gonna take about, mm, depending about a half hour to get those fully cooked. So. Bring it to a boil, stir it occasionally, and there you go. We'll be back as soon as these guys are done. So my bird is getting super close to being up to temp. So I have this fat separator. This thing puts pressure so that liquid can't go up there. And you fill this up and your fat separates. When you pour, it's all good stuff that comes out. So I'm just pulling out some of these liquids using this other little strainer to strain it out. You're gonna need one cup of butter, one cup of flour, equal parts when you're making gravy, roux, sauces like that. And then you're going to need the drippings that came off my bird. And then I have a quart of bone broth that I canned last week. So I am just gonna melt the butter and stir the butter and gravy. And this is gonna make a lot 
our family love gravy. Just keep stirring it until it's all combined. All right, guys, you don't want this super runny. For whatever reason, mine was super runny. I'm wondering if it's the flour that I'm using. Um, so anyway, I added about another quarter cup because you want it to have some thickness, not liquid like it was. And you want to cook this until it smells like cooking, like walnuts or something like that. So you kind of waft it to you and keep moving it. So this is starting to smell super nutty. So you can see there's no fat in here. It's all on this side. So you just pull it up. And then as you pour, you watch in here for that fats to come in. You don't wanna jostle it too much. So just pour, it's gonna get thick and lumpy and nasty looking. Just keep mixing, just keep mixing. So I'm getting toward the end down here. I don't know if David can see this, but I'm watching this fat line going down. So I'm starting to get some chunkies and I let it stop going there and then just get this all mixed in. It could take a minute, so just move slowly. You don't wanna slosh it out of the pan. And it's super thick, it needs more liquid because you want it to be pretty liquidy here. So I'm gonna dump probably half of this quart in. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a quart is four cups. I switched to a bigger pan. I'm gonna dump the rest of my quart in. So what I'm doing is I'm letting that flour absorb the liquid and just stir until it is completely combined. We're about there. I might need to add a touch more liquid here. Sometimes your turkey gives you a lot of liquid and sometimes not. So I unfortunately did not have a whole lot this time around. So I took the drippings that I got out of there that little fat that was left, I put the, put the plug back in it, filled it up, oh, just shy of two cups of water. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add another two cups of water. This is, for me, I like my gravy a little bit thinner than this, so we are going to uh, add a little bit more liquid. All right, guys, so I'm adding two cups uh, more of water that was kind of in that broth. And say you get it too thin, which this one actually might be, you just boil it down and it just intensifies those flavors more. Here is a tip for you. So when I'm making a sauce, I'll kind of waft it and you kind of like, it just needs a little something. Try like this, this is nutmeg. I'm gonna hold this over here. I'm gonna waft it over the top of the nutmeg, smelling the nutmeg and seeing if it smells like it could add something or take away. It works for me, it's, it's a nose thing. Okay, little nutmeg. This is time. No, that made it smell like dirty feet. This one is sage. Yes, definitely. All right, so I'm gonna do probably teaspoon of sage and nutmeg. I'll start with a quarter teaspoon and I may go up to a half a teaspoon. So what I'm doing is I'm stirring and I'm grabbing a couple of potatoes and I want my fork to go in like this, how it just slides in super smooth. That's what you want on all of them. Like this one, that took me a bit. So, couple more minutes. All right guys, so I'm just gonna pull this out. I'm gonna let it drip here for a couple minutes. Be careful, like sometimes these can slip back in if people bonk it. So just kind of let it drip for a minute. And then what I'm gonna do, because I don't wanna drip all over my floors, I'm gonna set it in this uh, nine by 13. So this is a trick my mama taught me, is you cover your top. So I'm gonna do a half a cup of butter, which is one stick, and I'm going to eyeball a cup of milk. If you do not have a potato ricer, it looks like this, has tons of little holes, it has a masher, these are awesome. They are a pain to clean though. I do have to say that. Um, but what you do is you just fill your little cavern right here. My mom was saying her mom had one of these when she was little and she used to love to do it. You can use a mixer if you want. That's what I used to do, a hand masher. And then there you go, you get 
little pieces. They look like little rice noodles. I do not recommend putting your potatoes in a food processor or blender or anything like that. That is probably worse than box potatoes. So I'm just gonna scrape this guy off and do not let this just sit in your sink. Get it, stick it in some water in your sink and then you'll be okay. But if you just let it sit on your counter, it's just, mm-mm. You will be very mad at me for telling you to get one of these. All right, I'm gonna give this a stir. The butter is still melting. You know what, I'm gonna throw a little bit more milk in. I only have about half a cup, so we'll throw that in. Just kinda, it's not completely mixed. The butter's not completely melted. I'm just gonna put it back on that warm burner. It is not on. Make sure nothing else is on next to this. All my burners are off. I'm gonna let it sit here. I can feel this, the heat coming off it. You're gonna let it sit for five minutes or so. You can pull out your bird, get your bird ready to go. Give it one last mix, a taste, and you're Bob's your uncle. I'm gonna show you how I test my salt and my potatoes. I don't just try them like that because they're gonna be on the bland side. So I get a little bit here. I dip it in here. Maybe a touch of salt and pepper. So you can do this one or two ways. You can just salt and pepper the gravy or you can add it there, either way. Turkey's done, everything's done. Let's get our potatoes and gravy. I love the creaminess. So my mashed potatoes are super simple. I don't put sour cream and all that stuff. It's good that way. I like to keep it simple and let my gravy do all the talking for me. Using those drippings from your turkey and your gravy just makes all of it merry together. I hope you guys try this potatoes and gravy and let me know what you guys think. All right guys, God bless. Have a happy Thanksgiving. So. All right guys, sorry about that. We lost power, so we, <laughs> we're gonna cut. The power came back on, we may lose it again. It's not even blowing wind outside, I don't get it. Okay, so, what is that noise? The washer. We'll make it stop. I need a third hand to hold my pan. All right guys. Oh, hold on, what are we doing here? Draining the pasta. And I'm gonna rice my butter in too. Woo! Jeez Louise. I normally stand on a stool, guys. I have a brother-in-law who does not like gravy. I think there's something wrong with him. Which brother is this? <laughs> no names. You gotta protect the guilty. Nathan. <laughs>